It's hard to always keep up with what's streaming where all the time. So today I want to talk about five more underrated horror films that are streaming on Netflix right now. And there are two sequels, classic sequels that are on Netflix right now that you should check out. Kicking this off at number five is going to be Oxygen. Now, this is the Alexander AHA film that came out a few years ago. And I feel like this film just dropped on Netflix and didn't really get talked about a lot. Now, this is not like the best film I ever made, but it is one single location concept. And I think it does that very well. It creates some very cool, tense suspenseful moments throughout the film with its core concept, which is kind of running out of oxygen. I'm not going to say a whole lot about the movie, but it is one core, again, one location. It's a woman trapped in like a pod and she's running out of oxygen. And so it's just her in the pod, similar to buried Ryan Reynolds when he's just buried in the coffin underground. This takes place pretty much entirely in there and like I said, it does create some good suspenseful moments. I think there's some good use of the like I don't, futuristic technology things here. It does make some very good use of a low budget. And if you haven't seen Oxygen, I definitely think it's worth checking out. Number four on this list is a classic film. And it's also a sequel to a classic film. Now, this film has garnered a lot more attention as years have gone on. And people have become wise to its actually being a good sequel, but I still think that it deserves to be in an underrated films list. Plus the fact that it's streaming on Netflix right now and you can go check it out. It is Psycho 2. Now, if for some reason you have not seen the sequel to Psycho or you didn't know it existed, it's on Netflix. You should absolutely go check it out because it is a fantastic sequel. It does so much, so unbelievably well that so many sequels do not do. It's takes the core concept of Psycho and it somehow finds a way to make a sequel actually work incredibly well with another amazing performance from Anthony Perkins and just rock solid horror film in general. Very worth checking out if for some reason you have not seen it. There's also a Psycho 3, which I personally enjoy. Not on Netflix, just mentioning in case for some reason you didn't know. There's also a Psycho 4, which I've actually never seen. But that's a prequel. And then, of course, there's Bates Motel. Anyway, point is, Psycho 2 is streaming on Netflix, and you should go check it out because it's really good. All right, the one that's coming in at number three on my list is probably going to make you roll your eyes a little bit, but it's actually Till Death with Megan Fox. Now, this film also dropped, and I feel like didn't get enough love because it's actually pretty good. Again, this is not going to blow your socks off because it's so unbelievably amazing and breaks just absolutely new ground in every aspect of the film, but it is actually a very solid suspenseful thriller about a woman who kind of this sort of trapped in a location concept trying to escape while people are trying to get you. Now, I'm a sucker for those types of films, and I think Megan Fox is actually pretty good in this film. She's not my favorite actress, but when, when she does a decent job, she does a very decent job. She's passable in this, and she has some moments that I actually think she's pretty good. There's some cool chase sequences, and here's some cool cat and mouse, cat, cat and mouse elements, and I do think also a cool setting, being in the ice and snow, secluded in a house, out in the cold, really amps up the uh, level of suspense and, um, I guess, danger that Megan Fox's character is in in this film. If you haven't seen Till Death or you didn't want to give it a chance because you thought, well, you know, it's some sort of suspenseful horror movie that dropped on Netflix with Megan Fox in it and you didn't want to give it the time of day, I urge you to maybe give it a second chance and or give it a second thought and actually go check it out because it is pretty decent. All right, coming in at number two is the film Unfriended. Now, this film was another one of those that I don't think that people don't think it's good, but it just kind of came out. And I think a lot of people probably thought eh, it's a gimmick. Like I thought it was one of the first films to really use that, like entirely plays out on a screen kind of found footage type of horror films. And it's been copied and replicated multiple times. And the sequel itself that it got dark web is actually also very good. But Unfriended is genuinely a good 
horror film and does a lot of things very well. It has some very creepy, cool moments. If you, for some reason, have not seen Unfriended and you wrote it off because of the type of concept it is, you should give it a shot because it does actually pull the concept concept off very well and is a very solid horror film. Some great performances, Unfriended, a great concept with a cool little twist at the end, good ending, as well as... Again, some cool uh, in-camera effects that they pull off here with the being on the screen the whole time. And just honestly, it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. All right, I have two honorable mentions just because I wanted to throw them in there. And the first is ties in with Unfriended, and that is Missing. This film is the, se- the pseudo-sequel, I guess you would call it, to Searching. And another one that I know that people are very aware of it probably when it dropped on Netflix, I'm sure people checked it out, but this came to theaters and I was talking about it in my best of the film, best of the year list. And I thought Missing was really, really good and deserved a lot more love than it got. So if you, for some reason, have not seen Searching, go watch that because that movie is incredible and then watch Missing. It's sequel. Both very good films, different directors, both very well done, and both take that aspect of like the entire film. It plays out on laptops and screens and does a rock solid job with it. So if you like Unfriended or that concept, check out Missing. If for some reason you haven't seen it, you slept on this. The next honorable mention is Child's Play 2. And now this one, in my opinion, is maybe not necessarily underrated in the fans of Child's Play series because I think... The people who watch Child's Play and are fans of that series actually consider Child's Play 2 to be one of the best in the series. However, on your average like moviegoer audience, I feel like a lot of people sleep on Child's Play 2 and don't really give it the time of day because they kind of write off the rest of the sequels. Again, considering you're maybe you're not a big fan of the Child's Play series, so you haven't watched all the sequels, Most just like average moviegoers or people that are checking out films on Netflix don't really give it the time of day. And Child's Play 2 is actually a very, very good sequel, similar to Psycho 2. Does a fantastic job at following up a classic horror film. And if for some reason you wrote it off and you haven't seen it, I wanted to mention that it is on there. It also is going to be leaving soon, according to Netflix. So, Get on that and check it out if you haven't seen it for some reason. All right, coming in, number one is the film Upgrade. Now, this is the film by my man, Leigh Wannell, and this film is just criminally underrated. Again, I do believe as Leigh Wannell has gone on and made more films, such as Invisible Man, he's gained more popularity. Uh, It has gotten a little more love. We are getting a TV show out of it, so it definitely has gotten more attention. But this and Insidious 3, both. Both of Leigh Whannell's first two films when they came out were just absolutely slept on and Upgrade is just such a perfect example of how to create a world and cool tell a cool original horror film with a tiny little budget. I see all these horror films and sometimes I'll get on here and I'll be like, yeah, it's okay, but it had $400 million, whatever ridiculous budget they have. $400 million is an insane budget, but... And the Insidious 3, Invisible Man, and Upgrade were all made on very, very tiny budgets. Leigh Whannell has proven he knows how to create worlds and write cool concepts built around and make films built around very small budgets. And so if you have not seen Upgrade, again, world building, it's like a science fiction horror film, super cool concept. If for some reason you slept on Upgrade and you haven't seen it, absolutely go check it out. It is definitely worth seeing that's my list let me know which one you are going to check out down below and which one is your favorite if you have seen them thank you so much for watching and i hope you're having a fantastic october i'm money scared i'm a big bad wolf i never see the silver line and only see the gold i don't speak in caps though everything bold put that on myself because it's a life that i done chose i said come through you can see me on the west side hey that's funny how they walking with each chest.